Hello YouTube, it's been a while since my last update. What have I been up to? Well, I've been building this fiber-coupled spectral fluorimeter. What is that? It's essentially a fluorescent spectrometry instrument that's connected to fiber optic cables that you can insert into certain systems for uh, measuring the fluorescence of something. For instance, a liquid or a molecule that is a fluorophore. Now, fluorophores are essentially compounds that fluoresce when excited by a certain wavelength of light, and they emit light at a different wavelength. Here are some very pretty UV active dyes. That's uh, essentially highlighter ink on the far left, and we have some various anthracene or polyaromatic based dyes here on the right. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but what is a fiber-coupled spectrofluorimeter? Essentially, it consists of a light source that produces an excitation light at a certain wavelength, and then you have a detector, in this case a pin photodiode. That pin photodiode senses the tiny amount of light produced by fluorescence, and it converts it into a voltage signal which we can read and analyze. Now typically you can either measure a single reading just to determine how much of a certain compound you have or you can measure that reading over time and correlate it to say the separation of a compound through uh, high performance like a chromatography or a gas chromatography various other separation techniques for any analytical chemistry geeks out there. Regardless, more about the thing that I've actually built, since I'm starting to run out of time. On this breadboard I have, uh, you can see there's a bit of a division here. On the left-hand side, I have just a um, moderate to high-intensity uh, low-UV LED hooked up to this fiber-optic cable. Um, it's purple slash low-UV. camera probably won't pick it up very well. It'll just look like a very overexposed white dot. Um, doesn't act very well on this highlighter dye, which I believe is fluorescent, compared to these uh, deeper UV wavelengths, which I can't seem to get my handheld UV light source to work, so we'll forget about that for now. Oh, no, here we go. Technology, what's it good for? But regardless, it's what I had on hand. On the right-hand side, I have this pin photodiode hooked up to another fiber optic cable. And that pin photodiode is hooked up to a very sensitive amplifier. So sensitive, in fact, that it can measure microamps, not just milliamps, but microamps, and convert that into a voltage signal. Now, because it's just sitting here out in the open, and there's no shielding, and it's pretty much lashed together overnight, um, it's quite sensitive. Sensitive enough to the fact that you can see the re reading change if I just simply put my hand nearby or move it away. Probably my watch containing metal plays another factor. If I just touch a component, I can throw the reading off scale if I hold it there too long. Regardless, as sensitive as this is, it's an advantage because it means that I can sense the fluorescence of a compound. So we have in this glass vial, essentially, fluorescent highlighter ink. I've got the excitation light source in one hand, and I've got the detecting fiber in the other. Now, if I place these two somewhat perpendicular to each other inside the liquid, and I line it up just right, you can see an increase in the reading. Now, that multimeter is displaying millivolts right now. Once I actually have this thing properly built, I can crank even more gain out of this and gain more resolution and a wider range of detection. Right now everything is very MacGyvered and I'm still working out a few bugs. However, you can still see that the fluorescence is actually causing that reading to increase if I can keep these two things aligned. If I pull the excitation light source away, it drops. If I shield the ambient light source, it drops a little bit more. If I put that back in there, Line it up just right, reading goes back up. 
Now it takes a while to stabilize just because of the nature of the circuit I, that I've built. I've built it mostly for um, high gain, essentially a large amount of amplification, just because I'm working with a very MacGyvered setup. I need that extra gain in order to detect the voltage being sensed. If I have a lower noise level, just from properly building this, then I can actually use even more gain and correct for any offset error that I might have. Anyways, this is essentially the basics of a fiber-coupled spectral fluorimeter. It sounds pretty complicated, and it kind of is. But what are some improvements that I plan to make? Well, first off, choosing the right wavelength LED to excite the specific dye that I'm interested in. Um, in this case, this won't be the actual dye, the fluorescent. It'll be something else, something probably a lot more nasty, ethidium bromide, which is used for intercalcating and staining DNA. Um, also be involving the proper lenses to focus the light source into the fiber and the fiber, receiving fiber into the pin photodiode, more accurate amplifier, filters to select the correct wavelengths, and uh, connecting everything up to a computer and doing some experiments. So stay tuned, you might see some sneak peeks of this project as it unfolds. Well, I hope you like this video, it's getting pretty late and my time's running out so I should cut this short, but if you have any questions or comments regarding this device, um, or you have any thoughts on how to improve it, just feel free to send me a message. Otherwise, if you like this video, please rate, subscribe, and comment.